Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, do you know when you bid on something on eBay and you don't really want it, but you bid anyway because it's cheap and you think, oh, I might as well. Well, unfortunately, that's what's happened here. And I seem to have accidentally bought 25 untested graphics cards. Graphics cards that, well, I'm not even sure what they are. So today I thought we'd go through them, uh, take a look at each one, take a look at what's wrong with each one. If we can, we won't really be doing any testing and benchmarking today. This is just more of a look at what on earth is inside this box. I've got my cameraman or cameraman woman helping me out today, my sister Sophie. She's sporting one of the random gaming HD handmade hats that she makes. So uh, I'll leave a link to those in the description if you want one of those. But let's get into the video. I'm out of breath because this box is so heavy and let's get into it. So as I took this bit of video, I still hadn't looked in the box and I had no idea what to expect inside. This selection of cards was described as faulty slash untested. Whether they are mostly faulty or untested remains to be discovered. What I'll probably do today is quickly test the cards that look to be fully intact just to see if the system boots, but then I'll have a separate video or videos for any repair jobs and full benchmark tests in the future, otherwise the video will just be way too long. I paid £50 for the whole box, so £2 per card. No matter how bad they are, as long as a couple work, I should be able to get my money back and more very easily. First up then, we've got a basic looking palette card. I do like the orange fans that palette used to use. If we flip the card over, it's clear that this is a GTX 460 Sonic edition. It dates to mid 2010 and would have been a great performance segment card back then. It should still be capable of some 720p gaming though. Next up, we've got, oh yeah, this looks like it belongs to a 1050 or something. Maybe we'll find the rest of the card in the box, though I'm not really holding out hope for that sort of GPU. The next card comes from a time when graphics cards were not only packed into artistic boxes, but had pretty cool paint jobs on the cooler. Unfortunately, the fan has gone missing. It might still be in the box though. I believe these were also available in AGP, not just PCI Express, which goes to show the age of this card. 2005, I believe. Next up, we have an absolute classic. This is the 8800 GT. It suffered some damage, but we should be able to fix it, at least aesthetically, very easily. Let's see what we can do. Tightening these connectors up and bending the metal back in place is easily doable and makes the card look much better already. I just hope it works. We'll test this one a bit later on. Any and all tests will be at the end of the video, but this video has been broken up into chapters so that you can watch as much of it as and when you want to. Now, what is interesting is that I've got a lot of these generic looking mislabeled NVIDIA cards in the box, which we'll talk about later on. You know, the ones that have a custom BIOS that's been flashed to make it read as a 1050 Ti, when really it's a GTS 450. Some would call them fake GPUs. Sticking with the legit finds, and next up we've got an old Quadro FX 4600. These are pretty old workstation GPUs, but they do have SLI connectors, so I'd love to do a Quadro SLI video for a laugh at some point, if I can find a supported motherboard, of course. Now next up, luckily, we have another Quadro FX 4600, so it looks like we might be able to do that Quadro SLI video after all. Like all of the cards in the box, this is a bit dusty, but it's nothing a good clean won't solve. I'll be testing all of these first though, as there's no point in cleaning a graphics card if we can't be certain it works, unless it doesn't work because it's clogged with lots of dust. Now I don't know about you, but I love this cooler. The silver metal effect here with the silver fan blades looks pretty cool, and I could tell immediately that this was an old 8400 GS. A lot of these were actually passive cooled, but to be honest, it's always nice to find one with a fan. It dates to around 2007, and I believe they can be found with anything from 128 megabytes of VRAM to one gigabyte. Next up, it's another 8000 series GPU. Again, this is from a time when the coolers were pretty eye-catching to match the box. I sold an old 8800 GTS a while back, so I'm glad to find another one here. They're great for authentic retro gaming. Again, I could tell what this was before flipping it over because the 8800 GTS is an absolute favourite of mine. 
Okay, so now we're talking. Here we have something a bit more modern. This is a Club 3DR7 series card of some description. Of course, back in my early days of YouTube, I remember comparing the R7265 with the 750Ti a few times. Those two always came close in games. From what I can tell, this is a 260X, so I'd love to get this one working if it doesn't already. It's a great looking small form factor card as well. Back to the past now with this AGP GPU. I don't think I've got many motherboards that still support one of these, but I'll try and find something for a future video. That old school Inno 3D logo looks pretty cool as well. This is a 6200, so it's pretty ancient to be honest. So our next card is a bit of a troublemaker, or it has been on this channel. I actually broke a 3870 a long time ago when trying to test Crisis with two of these in Crossfire. What's also interesting about these cards is that they are one of few GPUs to use GDDR4 memory instead of GDDR3 or GDDR5. Nvidia never used GDDR4, it was an AMD thing it seems, unless you count the standard DDR4 GT1030 which I like to pretend doesn't exist. The next thing I pulled out of the box was two random MSI fans which I hope belong to something, otherwise we can't really do much with them. They look to be from a modern card so that is a good sign. Luckily the next thing I pulled out from the box was the GTX 780 they belong to. Now I don't know why the fans have been removed but I'll try and find some small enough screws that fit the holes. I'm hoping this one works straight out of the box when repaired because I absolutely love these MSI G series cards and I think they look fantastic with their red and black colour scheme. The next thing, or things, I pulled from the box was this pair of 8800 GTs. One had the fan attached and one didn't. If neither of these two work, then I'd probably take the heatsink from one of these and slap it on another card just to see how well it does at keeping a modern GPU cool or something. If they both work, then I might SLI them first as well. We'll have ourselves a proper old school crisis SLI experience. Now at this point the weather started to turn so I pulled out one last GPU which was an unlabeled AGP mystery card and after that it was time to head inside and see what we had left at the bottom of our box. The first was an HD5970 which is a dual GPU card that combines two cut down 5870s on a single board and the final one is a Fire Pro V5800. At launch these were about 600 US and 480 US dollars respectively and I really hope that one of them at least works. Before I forget this pile of cards is made up of the aforementioned fake or mislabeled GPUs we spoke about earlier. I'll have to remove the coolers and scrape off the paste to find out exactly what they all are um, but I have a feeling they're probably all GTS 450s or 550 Ti's in disguise. If most of them work then I still can't really complain because I can find a use for them somehow or flash the original BIOSes back onto them and maybe sell them on if that's even allowed. For now though I want to quickly run through a few of my test results with a handful of these cards. Okay, so I've tested a few of the graphics cards in that box. The ones I chose were the ones that were intact or mostly intact. The ones that looked like they would work. Um, we're going to have probably another video, maybe another couple of videos where we try and fix the ones that are broken. Um, but for now, I thought I'd talk about a few of these test results. First of all, we have the 460 here, as you can see. Uh, this one fired up, but there were some artifacts on screen. Uh, very faint green lines. I've got a pretty funny idea of what I'm going to do with this card if we can't get rid of those lines using something like the silly oven method. Um, next up we have this, the R7, as you can tell it's falling apart, but it still did boot up. Again, there were some artifacts on screen. This might be fixable using that horrible oven method where you put the PCB in an oven. Um, but we'll have to try it, see if it fixes it. This. The 8800 GT actually worked perfectly. There was nothing wrong with this card. The cards here, I've basically tested are ones that not only I just was interested to see if they would work, but the ones that I also thought we could probably sell on uh, for the most money if they did work and ones that I would have most fun testing in future videos, basically. Next, the Workstation Fire, Fire Pro 3D graphics card. This one, did work as well, but the fan is so, so noisy. I think we're gonna need a new fan there. You can hear it actually as I'm moving it. 
Um, but yeah, it worked fine. The fan made a horrible noise. I'll play that noise for you now. But aside from that, it seemed to fire up. And unfortunately to end, my favorite card in the selection, the 5970, the dual GPU card didn't work. But again, this could be something that we might be able to fix using one of those stupid oven methods that you probably shouldn't really try and fix cards with, but it could work nonetheless. So there we go. Out of these five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five cards that we've tested so far, a couple of them are working, a couple of them have problems, but that was expected in the untested bundle. There we go. So there we go, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I forgot to film the outro to this video earlier on, so here I am in the, uh, what is almost darkness. Thank you very much for watching though. I didn't really wanna test all of the cards in today's video because it would have been very, very long. In some future videos, we'll be testing more of the cards, fixing the ones that look really broken and hopefully uh, playing some games on them. I hope you can join me then. For now though, if you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a dislike. If you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'm not even sure if I'm looking at the actual camera there, but never mind. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.